So I just installed iPadOS 16 Developer Beta 1 on my main M1 12.9 inch iPad Pro. And before we get started, fair warning to all the people installing the Developer Beta on their main devices. This is extremely buggy, especially on the iPad because there's so many new features, a lot of brand new stuff. This is a developer beta for a reason. If this is your main device and you're worried about some detrimental losses of data, I highly recommend avoiding it for a little while or putting it on a secondary device if possible because I've been playing with it for about an hour now and it's extremely buggy, although very cool to demo. But what I wanna do is talk about Stage Manager today and talk about all the different nuances and the features that it does bring because by default it's not even turned on and I had no idea how to turn it on until I kind of went through all the menus. But without further ado, let's talk about Stage Manager, how to turn it on, how it works, how well it works, and again, how buggy it really is right now. But let's talk about it. Okay everyone, let's jump right into this video. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is that I am on iPadOS 16. So if you see, we do have the new lock screen with that new font right there. So the next thing I'm gonna show you is the actual build number as we do in all these update videos. So we go into the about section, go to 16.0. Ooh, this is actually new. This is a new little drop down or a new like vision that we have. Before they used to just pop up right there, but now you can see the actual build number and we're on build number P. So, so 20A5283 lowercase p, which means we probably have a lot of betas coming in in the near future. But again, this is beta one of iPadOS 16. And what I wanna show everybody is all about stage manager. That's what this video is gonna be about. I'm gonna show you guys the nuances, how it works, how it looks. And again, this is extremely buggy because again, we're on beta one. So the first thing that you're gonna notice is that stage manager is actually in your control center. So this new little icon right here is what activates stage manager. If this is not turned on, then you're gonna have the same normal multitasking that we've always had since the very beginning where you do one of these, you split it, you know, you open up another one like files, and then there you go. So that is what happens when you don't have stage manager on. So now to turn it on, you just go in here, you press on this guy, and then if you wanna say open Safari, boom, there you have it. You have two windows side by side. And again, these are the two windows that we were multitasking with before. And just like Apple said, they are resizable. So you can move them around. Again, it's not absolutely perfect, but it is decently fluid. Like it's not nothing too crazy. So if I press this right here, let's go to ESPN. You can see that it's loading up nicely. And then if I wanna open up another window in this view, you actually have to grab it, move it into here, and then you have it with these other two. So again, we're gonna resize this one. And I believe that you can actually have up to four different windows, floating windows at the same time. So here we have Twitter, let it load up. And you can see that it's loading decently fast. It's nothing too crazy, but again, when I resize it, it is a little bit janky and you can move it around if you do want to. So moving them around is actually a little bit interesting because it does move stuff out of the way. So it's still kind of sort of adopting that uh, grid style. So it moves stuff out of the way as it thinks it needs it, right? So if I grab this, if I wanna move it, I can move it down here. And then sometimes it's a little bit hit or miss. So if I wanna grab Twitter, sometimes it does miss. But again, if you wanna move it out of the way and throw it into your like little shelf over here, then by all means you can do that. But what I do wanna try is maybe opening up a fifth one. So here's YouTube, this will be the fourth one there. And then if I grab maybe YouTube TV, it does open it, but then it moves the, the last app over to the shelf over here, which is my mail app over here. So keep that in mind. That is what we're dealing with when it comes to that. So when it comes to actually using multiple windows at the same time. But again, I think this is absolutely incredible that we finally have floating windows and they work well. So if I go over here and open up this YouTube video, it's gonna start playing normally. And I wonder what happens if I play another YouTube video. Will it pause the other one? Yeah, so it sounds like it pauses the other one. So this is YouTube TV and you can hear that the other YouTube one did go away. But if I go in here and press play, it'll stop YouTube TV and then start playing regular YouTube for me. And the next thing I wanna show you is when you go into multitasking. So multitasking, I'm gonna swipe up with three fingers. You can see it's a little bit different. So it's now in clusters. So these, it says YouTube, ESPN.com and two other tabs. And you can see that there are in different clusters. And then you can see that these are actually smaller because they are in that, because they are in that stage manager view and they are floating windows versus this one. This is a full screen one, which we didn't put in the stage manager view. And then let's see what happens when we turn off stage manager and you're in stage manager mode. So if I go in here and turn it off, you can see that they actually all disappear. And if I go back into the multitasking, it goes back into that double side to side window that we've all either grown to love or hate, you know, over the past couple of years. So now the next thing that I do want to show is what happens when you plug in an external monitor like they did during the keynote. So this is my BenQ monitor. It's a Thunderbolt capable monitor. It's what I use with my MacBook Air. Now this part has been a little bit buggy in all my testing so far. Again, it's only been about an hour, but let me show you what happens when you do plug it in. So it gets recognized and then immediately you see that we now have a brand new experience, right? 
Normally, you can see my widgets down here, it would get mirrored onto that secondary display, but now we have two completely different separate displays and it works just like any other secondary monitor, right? So here's my mouse down here, and if I scroll up, then my mouse goes up here just like normal. So now what I wanna do is make sure that my state center is on. So you can see that state center is on, and if I open up, let's say Safari down here, it's gonna open Safari on the main screen where I'm using that mouse, and then if I go up here, let's open up something like Notes, it's gonna open up notes. Again, you can see that's a little bit wonky right now because it's sideways. It shouldn't be in that, in that mode right now. But you can see that that is happening. And then if I wanna open up, let's say the Photos app, move it over here, that opens up fine. So let's actually try to open up Twitter on the top one over here. You can see that Twitter does open up or at least it tries to open up. Again, it's still a little bit wonky, but the one thing that I do wanna let you guys know is that this is kinda of treated as two different home screens, right? So if I try to go into multitasking on the bottom screen, which is the actual iPad, it's gonna show me multitasking for the iPad. And then if I wanna do multitasking over here on the top, it's only gonna show me the multitasking of the Twitter application. So again, you can see that stuff just kinda of quit out. It's still a little bit broken, but in theory, it does work. Some things that I've tried so far is moving an entire, let's say if I have Safari open, and if I wanna move it onto that secondary screen, you actually cannot do that, which is probably something that will get fixed and will be brought into, but right now you cannot actually move one window into the other screen itself. You have to open them separately onto those screens. So if I wanna open up, let's say LumaFusion, it's gonna open up on there. And then I have Twitter over here still. So if I wanna bring in Twitter here, you can see that I can do that. So all in all, like in theory, it's working, it's demoing correctly. Again, wish me luck editing this video in LumaFusion because that's what I use to edit most of my videos. But overall, Stage Manager in theory is gonna work amazingly. Again, this is just the original beta, beta one, and we're gonna get a lot more updates as things go along. But overall, I'm liking what I'm seeing. So far, it's decently fluid. Now the million dollar question is how much work will I be able to get done on an original beta? So definitely follow me on Twitter right here if you guys wanna follow along because I'll be probably tweeting about how I'm editing in LumaFusion on iPadOS 16 with a secondary monitor. But as you can see, LumaFusion seems to be stuck and that's happening to a decent amount of things. So maybe if I move this over to the shelf that seemed to work before and then I try to open it, you can see that now it is opening and if I press, let's say, start to move this around, now it's working. So you can see that, you know, all in due time, there's little hiccups that happen, but overall, I'm a big, big fan Sorry for the live kind of raw uncut footage right now, but this is, I just wanted to show you guys in real time what this looks like. But overall, I can't be upset. So that's pretty much gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like you saw, Stage Manager has a lot of promise. Obviously, Apple has a lot of work to do on the bug fix side because again, it is an original beta, a 16.0 beta one to only developers. It's not even open to the public developer program quite yet. So definitely stay tuned. Hopefully Apple keeps iterating on this, you know, every week, every two weeks, solidifies it a little bit more because there was a lot of new features thrown into iPadOS 16, not just Stage Manager. You know, there was Freeform, which we'll talk about later, the new weather app, you know, the new collaboration stuff. And then again, all the stuff that happened with iOS 16 is also being ported over into iPadOS 16. So bear with Apple, bear with us while we go through all these new feature changes. And at some point, we'll have a full video of iPadOS 16 to all the masses once it does release. But if you guys did make it to the end of the video, leave a little dolphin right here so I know that you made it to the end. And leave a comment down below if you guys are excited for Stage Manager, if you're excited for iPadOS 16, and if all these bugs are finally fixed, is this enough to make you say goodbye to Mac OS or is there still something missing? Always curious to know. But if you guys wanna see some more stuff on iPad OS, click on one of these videos right here. But until next time, everybody, I'm out of here. Peace.